Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what I am going to be doing is just a quick review of this mini PC right here. This is a PC by the Chinese company BMAX. Now, full disclosure, they did send me this computer and I do get to keep it as for review and my personal use. But even with that, I'm not going to uh, sugarcoat anything. This is going to be a completely fair and honest review. And the first thing we're going to start with is here on the actual, actual, on the actual Amazon page that I went ahead and ordered it from. This is a typical mini PC. It is upgradable to an extent, which will be, we will be going over in just a sec because I'm actually going to be unboxing and tearing down this computer so we can see how easily accessible it is. But before we do that, let's talk about the specific version that I went ahead and ordered. Now, it doesn't say here on this Amazon page, but my specific model is the BMAX B5. This is the uh, mini PC that comes with the Intel Core i5. I'm going to get a little bit more into that in just a bit, but this specific model has 8GB of RAM and a 256GB M.2 SSD. It also supports dual Wi-Fi. Additionally, it has Bluetooth 4.2, and I'm going to go ahead and get into some of these other ports when we go ahead and unbox this actual unit. So, sorry to say, but I already accidentally took it out of the box. There's nothing too special about the packaging, but first, taking a look at the front, we can see our standard audio jack. We have a USB Type-C, two USB 3.0s, and our power button. Looking over at the side, we have our heat vents, and if you actually look pretty close, you can actually see the visible heat sink on the side here. On the back, we can see a little button to reset, our mini DV port, an HDMI port, two USB ports, and then a one gigabit LAN connector, as well as our AC power connector. If we take a look at the back, we can see that this is the B5. Additionally, we have our input voltages as well as our serial number. Right here, just for fun, let's go ahead and give this top little plastic coating a peel. The only real issue I have with this glossy top is you can see here it is very receptive to fingerprints. I know you probably won't be touching your PC, but this is really the only concern I have with the aesthetics of it other than the kind of tacky Transformers ripoff logo that we've been seeing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this apart and see how upgradable it is. Now we saw in the last mini PC we looked at that we literally just push on the top and it pops open. Now this is not the case with this PC. First we can see these little rubber feet pads here. What we're going to need to do is actually peel this off to get to the screws. Now depending on how many times you do this, this isn't really a good thing because I can see the uh, adhesive on these eventually wearing off if you tend to open up your computer a lot. So you can see it kind of pulling up there. So I went ahead and took all of them off. From this view you can also see the two screws for a mounting bracket that actually comes with the unit. So what I'm going to do is use this little screwdriver and pop out all these screws on the bottom here. Once they're all popped out you can see this little latch right here. I just put my fingernail in there and I could just pull off the bottom like this and then that exposes all of the internals of the computer. First, I'm gonna see how easy the RAM is to pull out. You just move the little uh, clips on the side, pull it out, and it's pretty easy to get out. One thing I did notice is this is only a single channel RAM, RAM stick, so you won't get the benefit of uh, dual channel RAM with this mini PC. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pop out this little M.2 SSD here just to see how easy it is to go ahead and remove. So this right here is the M.2 that it comes with, at least with the version that I went ahead and purchased. And then if we go ahead and look under where our M.2 SSD is, you can actually see the little dual band Wi-Fi card here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just peel off this to see how it is connected. You can see the dual band, the little screw, so you could actually change that out if you would like to. As well, right next to that, you could see the little battery for our motherboard BIOS. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that little tape back on the Wi-Fi card and put everything back together real quick. So first I'm gonna go ahead and pop the RAM in, pop in the M.2 and screw it down. And next we'll go ahead and replace this back cover. So now with all that said, the only real con to this computer is the actual processor that is included with it. It is the Intel Core i5-5250U. Now being that this is a 5000 series mobile processor, it came out in the first quarter of 2015, making this processor roughly six years old. Which, for the money, 
well, we'll, we'll get, I'll get into more of uh, comparison models in just a bit. But a processor this old, especially a mobile processor this old, in a machine like this cannot hardly do anything. One of the things that it cannot do is gaming. If you expect to even do light gaming using this machine, you are not going to have a good time. You're going to want to look for a device with a newer processor with better integrated graphics. Now this little PC comes with Windows 10 out of the gate, so I figured I would load up Fall Guys and try the gaming on that. And even at like 720p super low settings, it just would not, it was not playable to any extent of the imagination. Gaming it cannot do, but what it can do very well is run Google Chrome, which is what we've been using it for. My fiance is the primary user of this machine. She has been using it for about a month for schoolwork. Uh, I went ahead and threw Manjaro Linux on it, and it runs absolutely great on it. It is the uh, GNOME edition with Wayland. And when it comes to running Google Chrome with multiple tabs, uh, running Zoom calls, things that you'd expect to, that a college student is going to need to do, this can handle all of that perfectly fine. Now, one of my concerns with this little processor was how much heat does it actually produce? So what I did was I opened up the Blender Render Benchmark Tests, ran the BMW 27, opened up the Task Manager as well as a program to monitor our CPU temperatures. And we can see in this case it did use 100% the CPU with a max speed of 2.5 gigahertz. The processor was drawing the full 14 watts and it did very well at keeping a maximum temperature right around 60 degrees Celsius. So even though this CPU is limited when it comes to actual power, at least we know that it will not actually overheat and cause issues in that regard. And for coming in right around $300, it's not that bad of a deal. And the, the MSRP is $349. I honestly could not recommend buying this at $349. But if you could get it at $300 or less, it's a fairly decent machine, especially if you're using it just for super basic tasks. If your budget is closer to the uh, $400 mark, I would recommend getting like a, a newer Intel Nook with a 11th gen Intel processor. With this, it will last a lot longer. It could probably run games a lot better. And you see the um, MSRP price here is about $170. You add on another... 30 gigs for $30 for a good uh, M.2 SSD, another 40 bucks for RAM, you're right around the uh, mid 400 range, and you could have yourself a really good PC that's gonna last a really long time. So if you're looking at a higher budget, I'd recommend the Intel Nooks. But even these BMAXs here, if I go ahead and visit the BMAX store, uh, they do have lower end models. Now, for what we're using it for, this, this, this PC is at a weird spot when it comes to specifications because the processor is decent, but it's old. So if you're doing what we're going to be using this computer for, which is just internet browsing, basically, I'd almost take a look at some of these cheaper models like this, this one right here, or one, one of these other ones that has the uh, Celeron processor. Honestly, for what we're using it for, that would have been perfectly fine. And I think I checked on this one right here. This is like a, a 2016 or 17 Celeron, so it is a little bit newer. But that is coming in about two, uh, well, a hundred dollars cheaper. And actually, I just noticed saved, so it's less than two hundred dollars. So if you are looking at an extremely basic PC that comes with the RAM and storage and all that, and you don't want to have to fuss with taking apart something, one of these cheaper BMAX models would be a pretty good bargain. Especially if you want something low profile like this that you could either mount directly behind a monitor or stash away somewhere and not even notice you have a uh, little mini computer there. But ultimately, would I recommend this unit in particular? Eh, it, it's, a, it's a good little unit. It does exactly what it needs to do. Um, if, I wasn't the one, if I was the one picking this out, I probably would have went a little bit cheaper for what I'm specifically using it for. But overall, based on how this machine performs, I would recommend uh, BMAX as a brand uh, if you are in the mobile PC market. Now this is an Intel machine, so if you're interested in a AMD Ryzen CPU in a mini PC, I've done a separate video doing a review of a PC with a Ryzen mobile uh, CPU in it. And I would recommend you go ahead and check that out. Now, one thing I did forget to mention on the specific model that I bought, if I go ahead and go down to the reviews, 
go down to one star, you can see the one star review here is about the mini display port on the actual PC. But as you can see here, I actually went ahead and purchased a uh, just a basic mini display port cable and it seems to work completely fine. So that has not been an issue for me. That guy who left that review probably just happened to have a defective unit and that sucks for him. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do like this content, make sure you like it, subscribe, and ring that bell so you do not miss future uploads. Um, yeah, have a beautiful day and goodbye.